Hey you guys, it's Rachel here with Senza Tempo Cunny Corso. So I've got some bad news. Um, unfortunately, all right, you're a fatty. I think you can take a break. Nice fat belly there. Um, so unfortunately, um, Velocity did not get her milk back. Um, Morgan's been given her um, fenugreek, uh, the same amount that we um, normally give Come here, dude. You're you're nice and fat too. Um, the same amount that we, hold on, Gary, lay down. The same amount that we normally give to our females, and um, and it's not it's not re it's it's having no reaction. I don't know why that is, um, because I've never seen fenugreek not work, but maybe it's just because regardless you still need the hormones and she just does not have the hormones so unfortunately um it's gotten to the point where velocity may just have to give up her litter to carrie um and carrie may just need to finish them off thankfully um carrie's a really fantastic uh, mother she's taken these puppies on she's fed them she's cleaned up after them she's treating them just like her own babies um, as you can see, she's licking them here. So they're going to be fine regardless. But I think that this is very much a cautionary tale um, to not get a a female um, spade. Come here, dude. You can't. I know you're big and you're tough and you're strong, but you can't just knock everybody off. Everybody's got to eat. Um. The wildest thing about this is that Carrie actually had some issues with her milk early on and um, she was given fenugreek and the puppies were fed goat's milk um, until her production um, picked up and now um, she's having to, to nurse these guys but it's a lifesaver. Um, I'm really fortunate that um, I had Carrie to bring over here because otherwise I literally, it would have been bad. Like I literally would have had to have um, stayed over at Morgan's house and, um, and, and, and just slept on their couch and bottle fed because it's too much to ask for somebody to do to bottle feed an entire litter of puppies like this. It's, it's, I promise you, it, it's a lot of work. Um, but thankfully I could just bring Carrie over. Um, so yeah, cautionary tale, do not, if, if you can, if, if you have the option, no dude, no fatty, come here, you big old brute. Um, if you can, whatever you do, don't let your vet spay your female after she has um, a litter of puppies, um, after a cesarean, like, like during a cesarean, because um, you will very likely have a female Oh, nice. Look at that. That is incapable of feeding her own babies. And you will be... And this is the thing, right? Is that people think it's like, oh, it's no big deal. You just bottle feed. The truth of the matter is, is that not every puppy will take a bottle. Okay? They... Some of them, especially if they're already this old, they know what milk tastes like. They know what their mother... You know, what the texture feels like. And they, they can and, and absolutely do reject... Um, bottle feeding and it's, it's happened to me before no hold on I know they're pooping but let them eat look at her she's gonna she's gonna clean up the poop <clears throat> yeah, she's a really good dog she's doing a really good really good job over here as the All right now lay back down for me okay thank you good girl um so anyway so um you know, it's a really, it's just like I said, it's a really bad idea. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Um, you know, the vet said that she had my dog's, my puppy's best interest at heart. But, you know, you can't tell me that they go to school and all this. And they, and they're, you know, their whole big shtick is that they're smarter than me, right? That was her whole thing is she knew better than me. She's smarter than me. Well, you know. If she's smarter than me, she should have known that this was possible. And I'm not gonna lie, I, I didn't know. Um, 
I've only ever had one dog that I had to have a cesarean and a spay afterwards. And I did it with um, Blondie on her last litter. And, um, and she was fine. Um, I don't think that she had those issues or if she did, it's possible that maybe I had another dog to put, I, d I just don't remember. Um, but what I can tell you is that she's the only one. And now, now having had this experience, I can promise you that I will never, ever, ever do it again. Um, and I may have just gotten lucky um, with with Blondie, or like I said, I could have. I'm notorious for like I don't even think about it. If I have a puppy who's, if I have a mother who's kind of fallen behind, maybe she's got a big whatever. I will not hesitate to just move puppies onto another female, and I don't really think twice about it. So let me get you over here. Um, so anyway, so I don't know, but what I can tell you is the only other time I ever had a cesarean and a spay was with Belladonna and she um, didn't have any puppies. Like she only had one puppy. And those of you that have been watching a long time, you'll know that I did take a couple puppies um, off of Trinity and I put them on her. Um, because she really wanted a baby. They were older, and so they were able to kind of like fulfill <laughs> fulfill that need for her um, while, uh, lay down, <clears throat> good girl. Um, they were able to fulfill that, um, that need for her to have babies and kind of clean her out milk-wise. But I do remember that we, they didn't stay, obviously they were older, so they didn't stay in there very long. So, what it seems like is that you get about two weeks. And that makes sense. I was thinking about it because um, those of you that have been watching a long time, you'll remember that Midnight had a, um, a hyperplasia. And um, I had her spayed when she was still technically in heat to try to help with that hyperplasia condition. And it took about two weeks for the hormones to subside for that condition to resolve itself. Basically what hyperplasia is, is it's when the, the, um, all of the tissue of the, um, of the reproductive, I want to be careful because I've, YouTube is so weird about stuff like this, but basically this area here, all this here and back up in here, when a, when a female dog goes into heat, it swells up and her hat, her hormones went crazy and it swelled up so much that it actually started to make the inner lining in here begin to protrude outside and um and it can be it can be bad dogs will often self mutilate in a situation like that so um so it was very important to me to remove um to remove the, um, it was very important to me to remove the hormones that were causing that. So that's why we went ahead with the spay because that's the only real way of resolving that. And, and so, you know, thinking about that, it makes sense that after you have a cesarean and you remove the uterus, that the hormones would take about two weeks to decline and then you would have issues with production, with milk production. Um, so, like I said, definitely a blessing that I've got Carrie here. Um, and, you know, Morgan and them are, are, you know, saying she's doing a really good job. I can tell that. Um, and um, so it's definitely a lifesaver. Um and there are some um, there are some questions that I did want to address. I had some people that <clears throat> that were like kind of like you know questioning about Carrie and um, kind of where she came from and things like that. And and they were kind of like being rude because they weren't included and. Um, and so I want to be very clear with people that I, I am a very transparent person. I'm a very honest person, but that does not mean that I don't do things on my own without telling you, you know what I mean? 
So, um, and, and I'll tell you kind of why. So I'll give you an example. Whenever I was dealing with the vet on this whole situation, I had some people basically accusing me of having a high cesarean rate within my dogs. And, and that's, and, and it's something that I've noticed with people. Like whenever, um, I'm honest about, like, say that we have, like, we lose a puppy, like a fader or something like that, whatever. People will say, oh, well, she has an unusual, she has an unusual amount of puppies that die off, blah, 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 right? And the reality of the situation is that they don't have, um, any way of calculating that average because there are no other breeders that are out there being honest with you and telling you, no, 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 being honest and telling you every single time that they have a litter. And okay, okay. And every single time that they lose a puppy in a litter. And so there's, and not to mention every single time they have a cesarean, like how would you know if my dogs have a high cesarean rate if you don't know um, every single breeder um, that is getting cesareans? And what ends up happening is that in my, in my effort to be honest with you guys and be transparent and not honest as, as though I feel like I'm doing something wrong and like I need to tell you, but it's like, I wanted you guys to see the reality of being a breeder and the kind of stuff that happens. And specifically because so many people think it's easy money. And so my goal was to show you guys Look, not only is it not easy money, there there are cesarean, there's unexpected cesareans, there's all kinds of stuff that happen, and on top of that, there's a lot of heartbreak and blah, blah, blah. So in my effort to try to dissuade people from being breeders and, and showing people the reality so that when animal rights activists say, breeders don't work, why don't you get a real job, you know, making money off the backs of your dogs, you're lazy, blah, 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 so that they could see that A, it's not easy, B, it is work. C, nobody that I know that is trying to be a good breeder is just sitting around making money off the backs of their dogs. And instead, what has happened is people are going around claiming Rachel has a bunch of puppies that die. Rachel has a bunch of cesareans. Rachel, blah, 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 blah. And so it's gotten to the point where it's like, you know what? I'm not going to waste my time with this stuff anymore. You know what I mean? I'm gonna do like every other breeder does out there. I'm not gonna tell you every single time that I have a litter. And I'm not going to, to show you every single dog that I have. Um, and, sp and for another reason, because I don't want people getting emotionally attached to dogs and then throwing a tantrum whenever I have to rehome one because it either doesn't pass its health testing or maybe the temperament doesn't like whatever it is you know what I mean for whatever reason that I end up deciding that a dog is not going to be in my breeding program um <clears throat> you know I just I'm just realizing that it's that it's easier for me to do my job and um and it just makes more sense for me to just not for me to just do what everybody else is doing, what like literally what everybody other breeder is doing, and just you know run my business, and um, and I don't really care how anybody feels about it because I've done it the other way and it didn't work. You know what I mean? Um, yes, I educated people and that was fine, but it also caused a bunch of people to go around trying to trying to damage my reputation, claiming that somehow my dogs are different, that somehow I am like a witch and I have this magical ability to put spells on my dogs to where they lose puppies and they have to have cesareans. Because the reality of the situation is that um, the dogs that, um, all of my dogs come from different people. You know what I'm saying? So like, you can't look at all my dogs, like for example, all the dogs that have had to have cesareans, right? There, It's all been for different reasons. It's not like everybody's just needed cesareans. Like, no. Belladonna, who I did not produce, she had um, a litter where she had one puppy that got extremely large that ruptured her uterus and had to have a cesarean and had to be spayed because it destroyed her uterus. Blondie had a puppy that died in utero that um, caused uh, basically a blockage in the pressure from her continually trying to push out puppies caused a puppy to push through her uterus and, and cause a uterine tear. And she had to have um, a cesarean. Totally different situation. 
Um, I think that what happened with Velocity and Trinity is the same kind of thing. And they are also not related. I mean, they're, va they're like, um, related, like, through Preacher farther back. But, um, but it's, it's not enough for it to even be significant. And both of them had a bunch of swelling. Um, I think it was called, I think it's called edema swelling, um, back here. And, and I think that the swelling basically compromised the integrity of her tissue and her ability to push. And so I think that's what happened with those two. But regardless, they're all different lines. They're, di they're different, bre they come from different breeders. They have different bloodlines. Like the idea that somehow that I would have any, that I could even have any effect like that is stupid. It's, it's literally dumb. Like it's so unscientific. It's so basic. It's so like back in the Salem witch trials when they were like, if you can survive, you know, being tied up with a cinder block at your feet, you, you can make it. It's like, it's dumb. You know what I mean? It's dumb. It's dumb people pushing dumb stuff. And I'm just kind of tired of it. It's just gotten to the point where I've realized that, you know, um, most people are here for my pack videos. Okay. Most people are here because they like my dogs. So me not telling you every single thing that I do is really not going to change things all that much. And if anything, I think that it does more harm than good. So that's why I'm not telling you everything. That's why I'm not going to, you know, show every single dog that I have and every single breeding that I have. I'm going to start doing like other breeders do and run my business the way that everybody else runs it, which is, you know, in private. You know what I mean? doesn't mean that I'll never tell you about things that are going on in breedings and whatever, but I'm, I'm just, I'm not going to, I'm not going to you know, waste my time doing it with every single one. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just a thing. And when we lose a puppy, I'm not going to go and talk about it like anymore. Like used to be, I would talk about it because I used to feel like I could be honest and people would understand. Now when I'm honest about things that naturally happen, people are like, Oh my God, she has so many puppies that die. Blah, blah, blah. Even though they don't even know what the normal amount of puppies dying is because nobody talks about that stuff. I've talked about it. I've, I've read studies for you guys on live streams and stuff, but of course they don't watch that stuff. They don't, they don't care about the, the truth or the reality. So, um, so that's that. Just wanted to kind of update you guys. These puppies are going to be very well taken care of. As you can see, we will always do what needs to be done. I hope you guys are having a good day and I'll talk at you later. Bye.